Good evening. This is the News at Six. I'm Ishan Russell, and of course, the News at Six is all about the day's biggest developing stories, and we've of course been tracking those for you. Today's, of course, the big stories are about the Delhi elections. It's been a pitched battle between Arvind Kejriwal and Kiran Bedi, who's been announced as the BJP's chief ministerial candidate. We'll be talking about that as well as the trading of the charges as far as the national politics is concerned over the ordinances between the government and the opposition. We'll be talking about all that and more over the next half hour. But first, the headlines we're tracking right now. Government denies opposition charge on ordinance route, says previous governments brought in an ordinance at the rate of each month in the last 62 years. Aam Aadmi Party Chief Arvind Kejriwal holds roadshow in Delhi, challenges BGP's Chief Ministerial Candidate Kiran Bedi to a debate. Bedi dismisses it as a drama. Show of dissent within the BJP in Delhi, supporters of various party leaders protest against denial of tickets. The International Monetary Fund scales down growth projections for the world economy, predicts slowdown in China will impact Asian economies. And a 30% increase in tiger population, big cat numbers now in India are at 2,226. Alright, so the first story, the centre today countered the opposition charge on uh, the ordinance route taken by the government so far. In its defence, the government said that previous governments have brought in almost one ordinance per month in the last 62 years. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Venkaya Naidu asserted that the ordinances were necessary to clear policy logjam. The government faced a series of attacks from the opposition parties over the government's ordinance route. The sharp reactions came a day after President Pranam Mukherjee raised objection to frequent ordinances on key issues. He called for an understanding between the government and opposition to avoid repeated disruptions in parliament. The president's words should be taken very seriously by the people in power. You know, whenever we were in power, it was unavoidable circumstances. We were forced to bring some ordinances. Such ordinances were also severely criticized by BJP. Now they are bringing ordinance uh, in an unprecedented manner. The NDA government attacked the opposition parties. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Venkaya Naidu said the government was forced to take the ordinance route because the opposition parties continued to disrupt the proceedings of the parliament on one pretext or the other. According to the minister, it is a trend set by previous governments. Jawaharlal Nehru, the first prime minister, he opposed ordinance during the discussion in the during the British regime, but at the same time he vehemently insisted for a provision to, in the constitution to issue ordinances during the discussion in the constituent assembly. And he himself, when he was the prime minister, has got uh, 70 ordinances issued mm. during his regime. Venkaya Naidu said that the government plans to introduce all ordinances in the forthcoming budget session. He also sought the support of the opposition parties in approving the policy change. So we have decided to call a meeting of the CCPA tomorrow mm. to discuss about the forthcoming budget session and its schedule. Mm. And you need to give a 15 days notice for the members mm. so that they can also give notice for questions, etc. Naidu said that the government plans to meet with leaders of all political parties this week. It will attempt to solicit the support of all opposition parties to ensure a smooth budget session. Rajkamal Rao's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And switching to politics in Delhi, because uh, it's gotten really pitched over here, the politics. Uh, a day after the BJP's candidate uh, list drew the battle lines in the national capital for the next month's polls, Aam Aadmi Party Chief Arvind Kejriwal invited BJP's Chief Ministerial Candidate Kiran Bedi to a presidential-style debate ahead of the polls. But she took a dig at the offer, calling it a drama by the former Chief Minister. A day after his former aide Kiran Bedi was picked by the BJP as its chief ministerial candidate, Aam Aadmi Party chief Arvind Kejriwal challenged her to a public debate. He said that a two-hour long debate should be held before the elections at a location of Bedi's choice. Earlier, he congratulated Bedi for being selected to counter him for the top post in the national capital. Uh, request karta hu, Kiran ji nahi hai, shayad Kiran ji ne mana kar diya ki aap log bana lijiye unko. Ajay Makan ji ko bhi tino ke beech mein debate hona chahiye. Kiran Bedi accepted the offer but with a rider that the debate should take place on the floor of the house. 
Her party also dismissed the offer as mere tactics by AAP to get more attention. इस वक्त तमाशे पर टाइम वेस्ट करने के बाद अब हम जाएंगे सीधा तमाशा करना है ना तो ले आना आप अगर जीत के आएंगे तो फ्लोर ऑफ द हाउस पे डिबेट करेंगे वो फिर तमाशा करते रह जाएंगे हम काम करने निकल जाएंगे इट्स एन इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी इन दिल्ली दिल्ली डिबेट ड्रामा एंड डिलीवरी इट्स ऑल फॉर डी इट डिपेंड्स फॉर विच डी द पार्टी स्टैंड फॉर द अरविंद केजरीवाल आम आदमी पार्टी स्टैंड फॉर ड्रामा एंड डिबेट वी स्टैंड फॉर डेमोक्रेसी एंड डिलीवरी That's what Kiran ji has said. Come, let's go to the assembly. Let's provide a stable government and then debate for the people. Meanwhile, the Congress's key man in this election backed the idea of a debate between all top three candidates. However, there have been no takers so far. मेरे समझ से इससे अच्छा एक सही तरीका और इससे अच्छा तरीका नहीं हो सकता जिसमें नेतृत्व को अपने विजन के बारे में और जो मुश्किल प्रश्न सामने उठते हैं उसके उत्तर देने के बारे में एक मौका मिल सके बोथ अरविंद केजरीवाल एंड किरण बेदी विल फाइल द नॉमिनेशन पेपर्स ऑन वेंसडे डिस्पाइट रूमर्स बीजेपी चोज टू फील बेदी फ्रॉम इट स्ट्रॉन्ग होल्ड इन कृष्णा नगर द पार्टी पिक्स अ न्यू फेस इन नुपुर शर्मा टू कंटेस्ट अगेंस्ट अरविंद केजरीवाल फ्रॉम द न्यू डेली सीट Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV In less than 3 weeks before assembly polls in Delhi there are voices of dissent within the BJP supporters of state BJP president Satish Upadhyay protested outside the party's Delhi office to protest the denial of the ticket to their leader in a list of candidates released by the party late on Monday night Upadhyay had not been given a ticket however Upadhyay himself said that he was not disappointed by the party's decision He also said that not contesting the election was his personal decision. Upadhyay also sought to downplay the dissent, saying Kiran Bedi would lead the party to win in Delhi. Ah, ये तो छाड़ी चीजें हैं, चलती रहती हैं, लेकिन हमको Kiran Bedi जी के नेतृत्व में पार्टी को यहाँ जिता करके लाना है। सवाल ही पैदा नहीं होता। पार्टी से नाराजगी और मैं, मैं पार्टी का कार्यकर्ता हूँ, और पार्टी का कार्यकर्ता होने के नाते मेरी जिम्मेवारी है, और day one से मैंने कहा है। कि मुझे सत्तर सीटों पर चुनाव लड़ना है सत्तर जगह कमल खिलाने हैं कॉरेस्पॉन्डेंट शाम सुंदर हैज बीन ट्रैकिंग ऑल दीज डेवलपमेंट्स दैट हैव बीन हैपनिंग एट द बीजेपी हेडक्वार्टर्स लेट्स गो अक्रॉस टू हिम शाम आई मीन वी बीन टॉकिंग इट वो द पास कपल ऑफ डेज इन द सिक्स ओ क्लॉक बुलेटिन ऑफ द इंटरनल डिसेंट इन द बीजेपी दैट वॉज ब्रूइंग एंड इट्स नाउ आउट इन द ओपन definitely and uh, uh, none other than uh, uh, bjp state unit president mr satish upadhyay is uh, uh, is is claiming that uh, the, uh, there is no dissent in the party but his supporters uh, uh, came to the uh, party headquarters and they protested they shouted slogans uh, and it is very very clear that uh, everything is not all right in the in the delhi bjp though uh, yesterday uh, when uh, mr manoj tiwari uh, an mp from delhi he he said that uh, kiran bedi is mayor Uh, 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 an activist or a worker of uh, uh, party he was cautioned by the central leadership and uh, 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 ms kiran bedi was declared chief ministerial candidate and after that if it happens uh, in uh, bjp headquarter and by uh, the, the supporters of uh, bjp president then it is very clear that uh, bjp may claim bjp central leadership have made it clear that uh, uh, they are not ready to listen anything against kiran bedi still there are Uh, there is a dissent uh, and uh, people are not uh, uh, very happy inside bjp uh, uh, vis a vis uh, kiran bedi but uh, yes it is very very clear now that uh, uh, bjp is declared uh, uh, official candidate for chief ministerial post from uh, bjp side and uh, uh, mr amit shah and narendra modi they are backing uh, her candidate uh, candidature for the for the post so in that case if uh, the, uh, uh, there, there is no choice in front of mr satish upadhyay but to deny any kind of rift or any kind of uh, infighting in uh, uh, delhi bjp right asham we we'll leave it there for now but thanks very much for those updates and you'll of course uh, be coming back to you as and when more news breaks as far as delhi is concerned all right and we also have with us uh, sanjeev singh uh, he's a senior journalist and has been tracking all these developments in delhi to get a larger perspective from him sanjeev uh, simply i mean this is a presidential style of election as uh, the debates uh, the demand for debates uh, between arvind kejriwal and kiran bedi is been uh, doing so the issues seem to have been sidelined i mean delhi had the big issue of power for example that was a major issue last time around this time is just about the big faces Yes, in fact, uh, it appears that you know the issues in this election have just subverted over on their heads. So what we are seeing is actually you know more of bluff and bluster and sort of hype that's being created around uh, 
these personalities. So it's becoming more of a personal a battle between two personalities rather than actually you know talking about issues uh, that need to be addressed. And uh, ironically, this time it is the Congress party that actually wants to discuss issues, mm -hmm. but. Uh, Going by the public mood, it, I mean, it, it's pretty clear as what you said. It's a, it looks like a presidential sort of election where the personalities are going to domina dominate this election. Uh, like what we saw Narendra Modi do in the general election. Hmm. Delhi is witnessing a similar sort of battle, except here there is competition between uh, Kiran Bedi and Arvind Kejriwal. All right, Sanjeev, uh, we're talking about issues for Delhi. For example, women's safety is a big issue. Kiran Bedi tried to talk about that. Corruption is an issue that Arvind Kejriwal always talks about and also about electricity uh, charges in the uh, city. So as far as the big issue uh, emerging from here on, do we see this clash of personalities continuing or do we see these issues being also perhaps being talked about and becoming part of the political rhetoric in the national capital? I mean, you see, you have to look at the kind of uh, personalities that are in question here. I mean, both... Uh, both Arvind Kejriwal and Kiran Bedi are sort of, you know, they have that sort of image where it will be really tough to tie them down to a certain pole or a certain position. So far, we've seen Kiran Bedi refrain herself from actually getting into a one-on-one -on -one debate with Arvind Kejriwal. So that's that's been really uncharacteristic of her. And we've already seen reports coming out that, you know, she's, uh, she's not up to it as far as, you know, taking on Kejriwal is concerned. Hmm. But... If you look at the larger, if you look at the larger picture, I mean, ultimately, what what are people going to vote for? And that is something that they have to come up with. We've seen Arvind Kejriwal take over the plank of corruption, hmm. which is why you know corruption figures seventh in the list of uh, Kiran Bedi's piece, and it's actually uh, you know security of women that uh, comes up. So you know, but the problem is, as you said, that these issues are actually you know not getting the sort of coverage that they should. It's more about personality cult. All right, and uh, as far as the internal rebellion is concerned, uh, it certainly seems that the BJP's position, Sanjeev, uh, has certainly improved mm -hmm. given the mass uh, of defections that have happened. Krishna Tira joined yesterday, Kiran Bedi joining the party, Shah Yailmi from the Amadi party, the, the other MLA, Bini also joining in. So, uh, it's created a bit of a problem for uh, the BJP to be identified as any different from the other parties that it's fighting. Yes, in fact, uh, you know, People were saying the same thing about the BJP during the Haryana elections. But uh, what we actually saw, I mean, uh, BJP swept to a, f a full majority. So what uh, the BJP is trying to do is the fact that, you know, they just want to uh, ensure that they do not lose steam or momentum at this point of time. And if any known face who can, you know, even add a little bit of value to, to the BJP's rank and file is more than welcome. So we've seen these sort of, you know, uh, uh, sort of distress signals from people who did not get uh, tickets within the BJP earlier also. But I guess, you know, at the, at the bottom line is that they have to fall in line. And once uh, Kiran Bedi's candidature has been declared, I'm sure a lot of thought has gone, uh, gone into it to keep in mind all these various factors. So as of now, I think, you know, it, is a, you know, it may not look in terms of a perception that, you know, BJP is actually uh, bringing in outsiders. But in the long run, BJP believes that they will actually add value more than the harm that will be done out of, the, out of uh, them joining. All right, we'll leave it there, Sanjeev. Thanks very much for shedding perspective on uh, the Delhi polls for us. And we'll, of course, keep calling you back for more uh, as far as the Delhi is concerned for now. But thanks very much for coming in. All right, moving on. Uh, the International Monetary Fund has downgraded its forecast for global economic growth for this year as well as the next. The figure comes out uh, more with more than 1,500 business leaders and 40 heads of state prepared to, for the annual World Economic Forum at Davos. The IMF pegged growth rate at 3.5% this year, after lowering it from the previous estimate of 3.8% in October. The growth forecast for 2006 has also been cut to 3.7%. It's the steepest cut in its global growth outlook in three years as a result of weaker investments. The downgrade comes despite a sharp drop in oil prices and strong US growth. Growth prospects were lowered for many emerging economies over the next few years. IMF chief uh, Lagarde and uh, European uh, and said the eurozone and Japan uh, remain at the risk of settling into a long period of uh, dangerously low inflation. The slowdown in China is another factor behind the revised forecast. Next year, forecast for China is 6.3% compared with an average 10%. Beijing said the growth rate was within range. It will have an important effect on other uh, emerging economies in India.
but it is not expected to impact growth in India. India's growth forecast was broadly unchanged. Rising from 5.8% in 2014, Indian economy will grow at 6.3% in 2015 and 6.5% 6 in 2016. Boost in trade and investments have helped others offset weak and external demand. Right, time now for a very quick break, but coming up on the other side, we'll be talking about the stock markets. Yes, uh, they've gone up today. In fact, a fourth straight day of highs for the stock markets. We'll be telling you more on the other side. Welcome back here with the News at 6. Well, let's talk about some good news for environmentalists and wildlife conservationists and also for tiger lovers because the tiger population in India has gone up by 30% between 2011 and 14. In 2011, the number of tigers in the country was 1,706. By 2014, it's reached 2,222. And, sorry, 2,226. Referring to the census exercise, Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar said it was unique that in that never before had the exercise been taken at such a massive scale. 80% of the country's tigers have been photographed as part of the census. Tiger census is carried out every three years by the National Tiger Conservation Authority. According to figures, Karnataka has the highest number of tigers in the age group of one and a half years and more. The state has 408 tigers in that age group, followed by 340 in Uttarakhand, 308 in Madhya Pradesh, 229 in Tamil Nadu, 190 in Maharashtra, 167 in Assam. hundred and thirty six in uh, Kerala and hundred and seventeen in Uttar Pradesh for some of the figures the latest estimate today is that India has seventy percent of the world's tiger population and we have now two thousand two hundred and twenty six tigers presently in 47 tiger reserves and this is a great achievement. It's a net increase of 30% over the last estimation. The former Union Minister Shashi Tharoor could soon be questioned in the IPL scam case as well. Tharoor had to resign as Union Minister in 2010 after accusations of corruption linking him to the cricket franchise for his home state of Kerala. On Monday, Tharoor was questioned by the Delhi police in connection with the death of his wife, Sananda Pushkar, who allegedly had stakes worth crores in Kerala's IPL team. Police Commissioner B.S. Basi said Tharoor was cooperative during the three-hour-long interrogation on last, ni uh, last night. He said several other people are likely to be questioned in connection with Sunanda Pushkar's death. We have spoken to him for almost three, three and a half hours. Uh, we have uh, sought information uh, on the background, on the incident and also the events after the incident. And uh, see that uh, whatever we have spoken to him and uh, the, we are going to analyze the whole uh, talk which we had with him so that uh, we can uh, draw some conclusion. Our investigation is continuing. We have examined a number of persons. Many more are likely to be questioned. A time now for all the other stories from around the country and nationwide. Markets continue to rise for the fourth straight day today with uh, Sensex gaining over 522 points to close at a new peak of uh, 28,785. In four days, the cent index has now gained almost 1,438 points. Meanwhile, Nifty also ended at an all-time high of 8,696. Earlier, Nifty breached the 8,700 mark for the first time. The Supreme Court has granted bail to mining baron and former Karnataka minister G. Janardhan Reddy. Reddy is an accused in the illegal mining case involving Ovalapuram Mining Company. The court granted bail after CBI submitted that the investigation in the case is complete and both the charge sheet and the supplementary charge sheet have been filed. 
Seven people have died due to swine flu in Telangana this year, with as many as 173 patients currently undergoing treatment in various hospitals. The Health Administration has car started carrying out swine flu tests for most of the patients suffering from flu, even though it's not necessary as per central government guidelines. A massive fire broke out at a go-down in Surat on Tuesday. The chemical go-down, which caught fire around 10 a.m., had oil supplies used in textile looms and gas cylinders. As per reports, the reason of the fire was a short circuit. Four cylinders in the go-down also exploded due to the fire. That's some international news now, and the US and UK had reportedly asked Pakistan to hand over 2611 attack accused Zakir Rahman Lakhvi to India. During Lakhvi's hearing on Monday in the Islamabad High Court, the prosecution informed the court about the demand without naming the countries. According to the PTI, sources in the Home Ministry said the move was an attempt to improve ties and help deliver justice to the 2008 Mumbai attack victims, 28 of them being foreigners from 15 countries. At least two countries had called for the extradition of 26-11 attacks mastermind Zakir Rahman Lakhvi to India. According to the prosecution in Lakhvi's bail case, the Nawaz Sharif government was asked to hand him over to improve bilateral ties with the neighbour. Public prosecutor in the Mumbai attacks case Ujwal Nikam said Lakhvi's extradition could actually help serving justice in the case. If Jhakiyo Rehman Lakhvi can be able to get out of India, then it can be able to get out of India. And if you want to get out of India, you can also get out of India. But what will Pakistan do with the people of India? This is the question of Pakistan. Key political parties were also skeptic about Pakistan's intention to extradite the mastermind of 26-11 attacks. BJP also demanded extradition of Hafiz Saeed, another key accused in the case, as well as fugitive underworld Don Daud Ibrahim, believed to be hiding in Pakistan. I think Pakistan will have to do a lot more. There are many others in, uh, who were behind plotting of 26-11, uh, including Hafiz Saeed, and Dawood Ibrahim is still wanted in 1993 Mumbai blast. So I think it will have to be, uh, it cannot stop with Lakhvi alone. And a lot more needs to be done by Pakistan. Lakhvi will bite the hand that feeds him. Pakistan will realize it sooner or later. UK and US with some delay have only echoed what India has been saying from day one in 2008. The reports come at a time when the United States asked Pakistan to step up its effort against terror activities in the region. So far, Pakistan has denied bail to Lakhvi, keeping him behind bars despite bail in the case linked to the 26-11 attack case. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The European Union today ruled out lifting sanctions on Russia in the near future. The EU minister said that there were no grounds to lift economic sanctions against Russia. This came after a suggestion from the EU's new foreign policy chief that the bloc could consider softening its approach towards Moscow. However, after a meeting in Brussels, EU foreign ministers stressed they would consider relaxing sanctions only if Russia begins following the terms of a ceasefire and peace plan for Ukraine it signed in September. The comments came after even as fighting intensified in Ukraine's Donetsk area. Starting a strategic debate does not mean and has not meant changing the course of our relations with Russia. Uh, we stay the course. Our relations with Russia can only change if and when. I hope when, but <clears throat> at the moment it's if. Commitments uh, that were taken in Minsk are implemented. Now, the Islamic State uh, militants have released a video showing a militant threatening to kill two Japanese hostages unless a ransom is paid within 72 hours. In the video, the man also criticizes Japan for pledging aid to countries fighting IS. The video comes just days after Japan's uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe pledged $200 million to nations confronted uh, by the Al-Qaeda breakaway group. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has condemned the apparent threat and vowed to save the hostages. Meanwhile, Japan's foreign ministry said it was trying to verify the veracity of the video. え、同動画では法人と見られるもの2名の殺害がよくされておりますけど、その真偽について現在確認中であります。事実であるとすれば、このように人命を盾に取って脅迫することは、all the other international news and updates in global buzz. 
Zambia voted uh, today to elect President Michael Sata's successor, who died in October last year after long illness. The close contest is uh, between Defence Minister Edgar Lungu, representing the ruling Patriotic Front, and opposition candidate Kichilema of the United Party for National Development. The winner will serve out the remaining 18 months of Michael Sata's term. Zambia is due to hold a general election in 2016. The Cameroon army has freed 30 of its 80 hostages who were kidnapped during a cross-border attack by suspected Boko Haram militants. The people were taken into hostage on the 18th of January in one of the largest abductions in Cameroon. Many of the hostages were children. Cameroon said the hostages were mostly taken to Nigeria. The Yemen government and rebels have agreed to a ceasefire after clashes uh, between the government forces and the Houthi rebel groups. Uh, the Yemen presidential palace uh, called for a ceasefire and a meeting after a round of fierce fighting and attack on Yemeni prime minister that forced her to hide. Nine people were killed and 67 others injured in clashes so far in Yemen. At least 14 people were injured, six of them critically, after an explosion took place in uh, Ukraine's Kharkiv. The explosion went off uh, at the end of a hearing regarding a case of a member of the nationalist Swoboda party. The member had been accused of bringing a weapon to a polling station during the parliamentary elections on the 26th of October. Well, some sports now. And in cricket, it was a disappointment for India as uh, the English thrashed India by nine wickets in the third one day of the Tri Series in Australia. Batting first, India was bundled out for just 153 runs in less than 40 overs. English fast bowler Stephen Finn destroyed the Indian batting lineup with a career best of 5 for 33. Captain uh, MS Dhoni and Stuart Binney made 70 runs for the sixth wicket, but it was not good enough to give India a respectable total. James Anderson cleaned up the tail, finishing with four wickets. England chased down the total in 20, 28th over with the loss of just one wicket. Ian Bell and James uh, Taylor both scored half centuries. England got a bonus point, putting India under pressure to qualify for the final. And on to tennis now, and it was a good day at the top, for the top seeds at the Australian Open. World number one Novak Djokovic uh, started his bid for a fifth Australian Open title with a straight sets victory over Aljaz Bidene. Djokovic defeated his Slovene, unseeded Slovenian opponent 6-3, 6-2, 6-4 6 in less than two hours. Defending champion Stanislav Zorinka also started his uh, defence of the title with a straight 6-1, 6-4, 6-2 victory over Turkey's Marcel Ilhan. Fifth seed Kei Nishikori and two-time uh, Grand Slam winner Leighton Hewitt also won their respective matches to advance to the second round. In the women's section, top-seeded Serena Williams eased into the second round with a comfortable 6-0, 6-4 six win over her Belgian opponent. Her eldest sister Venus uh, Williams, eighth seed Carol Carolina Wozniacki and former Australian Open champion Victoria Azarenka also advanced to the next round. Well, that's it from us. The news and updates will continue right here on Rajasabha TV. So keep watching.